This episode will be just the breakdown of the scene setup, compositing setup that I used to create this image. This is probably not the best one that could be used to create such result, but as it happens very often, it's the result of changing my mind, trying to find some shortcuts and everything that normally happens when we work on our images. As the basis, I used the source files of the tutorial by Jonathan Williamson, published on April 12, 2012, and I decided to use this car and place it in some outdoor environment. Jonathan has set up everything for Cycles Render Engine, and I decided to convert everything to Blender's internal render engine and use a few notes to achieve something that I would be happy about. I didn't focus much on the background. I used some scene that I created a long time ago. I don't even exactly remember what was the purpose of this scene, but I simply have it in my library, added few trees, some photo in the background, and I thought that it would look interesting. Okay, so what I focused on in the first place was converting the materials from cycles to internal. There is no connection between those two render engines, so I had to create the materials from scratch. But the good thing was that this object was already split into parts and the materials were assigned as they should. So I at least had the names of the materials. I considered the car paint the most important material. But in fact, nothing fancy happens here. This shader model used here doesn't even matter much because I anyway used the technique of creating the separate clean diffuse pass where I used the single material to overwrite everything. I have set it to white color and used the technique that I told you about when talking about direct lighting. The most important thing here was the reflectivity. So as usual, turn on the mirror and reflectivity sets to one. Intensities of all of the materials, at least the ones that belong to the car, have been set to 1 and I simply went through all of the objects and used the settings that would suit my needs following all of the rules that I told you about during the course of this series. You can of course analyze each of the materials, but you shouldn't find anything unexpected. I simply avoided zeros in any of the channels in the diffuse color, intensities of all of the materials are set to 1, if the material should be reflective, the reflectivity is set to 1. No matter what the intended reflectivity was, I simply knew that I would set the power of reflectivity in compositing. In most cases, I used just the basic shader models, this one and this one. Only here in the specularity, you may find some differences. But I didn't use any other specular color than white color. Then it was a time to separate the objects into layers and render layers. The thing that I was sure about was that I would definitely separate the transparent elements from the rest. So I placed them in separate layer and render layer and used the technique that I showed you in the episode about transparency. There are many objects here and in order not to get lost too much, I have created the text where I simply named the layers. So here from this text block, I know that my transparent elements are placed in layer number seven. I was also sure that I would like to treat the car paint separately. So I placed everything that has the material of car paint in separate layer. And this is the layer number six. Then, as you can see, I have separated many other objects, but at the beginning, it was not that complicated. Whenever I found that there is no other way than to separate some elements, I simply did so. So it was not my initial intention to have so many separated elements. Okay, now the render layers. Initially, I had just three render layers. One that I called sky sphere. I have created this a little bit spherical object. I made its material shadeless and unwrapped the photo on it. So this was simply to fill the far background of my image. Then another render layer that I called BG is for rendering all of the other elements of the background. And then the third render layer that I called main that consists everything, every part of the car except the transparent parts. And of course the fourth render layer where I placed all of the transparent elements. Having just such setup, I began the initial compositing. So I simply took this far background at the beginning without any color correction, but here as you can see I have the color balance node but this appeared a little bit later and I simply placed the rest of the background on this far background using the mix node and that's the result that I got. 
For the background, I have activated almost every possible render pass because I knew that I would want to play with it a little bit. So here I have the direct lighting of the background. In case of the background, I didn't have any separate render layer for rendering the clean direct lighting pass. So as you can see here, I created this by dividing the colored diffuse pass by the color and it's done in this node. But here, before I divided the colored diffuse pass by the color pass, I first decided to divide it by the alpha channel of this render layer. And this is what I got. And this gave me full information about the colors of the leaves here. I had to do this because of the kind of the materials and textures that I used for the leaves. So instead of dividing this by the color pass, I divided this by the color pass and I got this. And this composites much better over the far background. But that's just a clean diffuse pass and I don't have any shadows here. And in order to create the clean direct lighting pass, the way that I explained in one of the previous episodes, I need the shadows. So here, just to be safe, I converted this into the black and white image. I took the shadow pass that looks like this. And also for the safety, I have used the RGB to black and white. And then I multiplied this by this, which gave me this. And I used this as my clean direct lighting pass. Here, later on, I have plucked the color balance node just to increase the exposure a little bit. As you can see, the slider here at the gain color is a little bit higher than the default settings of it. So that's before and this is after. Okay, we already know what issues we may have when we create the clean diffuse pass by simply dividing the colored diffuse pass by the color pass. We know the issues with the shadow pass, but in this case, none of those problems appeared. So I decided not to create any additional render layer just to get the clean direct lighting pass. Checking if there are any problems was one of the purposes of making this initial compositing. Okay, so the direct lighting pass of the background is ready. So then I took the environment lighting pass that looks like this. I added this to the direct lighting, which gave me this. Then I took the color pass and multiplied it by the result that I showed you just a second ago. And here, before I multiplied this result by the color pass, I did something that is against the rules. But it simply gave me the result that I want. I took the product of shadows and ambient occlusion that looks like this and multiplied it by this result because I figured that on those surfaces I needed the shadows to be a little bit stronger. I had the alpha channel of the area that I wanted this weird thing to happen, so I multiplied this by some small factor, 0.2, to have a little bit less influence of this on my image. And that's the result that I get. Then I wanted to play a little bit with the saturation, so I used the technique of mixing the colorful image with its black and white version, using a certain factor, and here's a little bit desaturated result. Then I wanted to add a little bit of the atmosphere. So it's happening in this node. This is just a mix node with the add blending mode where I am adding the solid color to the image. But as the factor, I am using the Z pass, which I first pass through the map value node. And that looks like this. And then I further adjust this factor by passing this result through the color ramp. So this image is used as the factor of this mix node with the add blending mode. And that's the result that I get. Then I mixed this image with the far background and I used just a simple mix note for this where as the first input I used this image and as the second input the result of compositing this render layer. Where as the factor I used the alpha channel of this. But as you can see, simple placing one image over the other doesn't give us very nice composite. It would be good to have a little bit of the light wrap of the far background over the foreground. So the simple trick that we already know from the videos about compositing the green screen footage, we take the alpha channel that looks like this, invert this, then blur it, and multiply by the original alpha. The amount of the blur here will determine the depth of the light wrap, and this image can be used as the factor for adding the blurred version of the background, which looks like this, over the foreground that looks like this. So this is the node where it's happening. 
as the first input I use this image, as the second input I use the blurred version of the background, and as the factor I use this one, and that's the result that I get, which doesn't look very nice by itself, but when I place it over the background, I get something like this. And this, as you can see, composites nicer over the sky and those buildings over there. So this is without the light wrap, and this is with the light wrap. So when we take a look at the whole compositing setup, the composite of the background is happening here in this area. As you can see, I am using a lot of muted mix notes, because, for example, here, the actual source that is connected to this note is somewhere over there, so it would be not that easy to figure out what exactly is going into this note. So I use the muted notes, I am giving a label to it, and this way I know that here I am doing something with the alpha of the background. So this note is the last one that is responsible for the background. The main flow of the notes is going like this. So here we have the first main element, here goes the second one, here the third one, and everything that is happening here are the modifications of those main elements. So the output of this note is our far background, and it looks like this. Then here I am mixing in the closer background, and here in this note I am adding some additional effects to it. Because here I am just rerouting this, passing it through the color balance note, and then this note is just a simple blur note where I use the Gaussian blur type, where as the size of the blur I have used the Z pass. So this mimics the depth of field. That's our background. And then from here we go straight here, where this note composites the main parts of the car over the background, where, as you can see, everything except the transparent elements are mixed into the image. So that's the background, here's the car, and here they are mixed together. The car composite that goes as the second input of this note is done using all of those notes. So this set of notes is responsible just for the main parts of the car. And by itself it looks like this. Then when I have this thing composited over the background, I can take care about the transparent elements. So here I am mixing in the color of the glass, then I am adding the reflections on the windows, then here I am adding the reflections on the lamps, So this is the last note that creates the basic composite and I decided to add some additional effects like further color correction, maybe some glow, grain and so on. I decided to reroute this and pass it through another set of notes. Like here just the color balance where I made some overall color correction. Then I created the setup for adding the glow, but I was not happy with the results and decided not to use it. But I left all of the setup just in case that I change my mind. And it doesn't give much of the difference, so maybe I will simply now delete all of those notes. Control X. And let's also change the label of this muted note so that it's not misleading. I will simply call it CC for color correction. Then in this note I play a little bit with the saturation, the same trick as usual, mixing the black and white version of the image with the colorful version of it, so that's a little bit desaturated version, although in fact here I have used the factor of 1, so the colorful version entirely covers the image, which means that I didn't desaturate this, but I have left this note here so that, for example, now, if I want to lower the saturation, I can simply change the factor here from 1 to, I don't know, maybe 0 0.8. So I probably checked few options and then decided to leave the factor at 1, but leaving those notes gives me the easy way to change my mind. Then here, after all of those adjustments, I have created the setup to create the vector blur, but this note is muted, 
So then when I decide to use the vector blur, the only thing I have to do is to unmute this node. And that's my final composite, which then is connected to this mix node with the up blending mode where I am adding the grain to it. Exactly the way that I showed you in the episode about adding the grain. So here is my original image of the grain. It initially had different size than my render size, so I had to make it the render size. And then, because this is the gamma corrected image, I had to use all of the tricks to properly convert it to linear version, back to gamma corrected and so on. I have explained it all in one of the previous episodes. And when it's ready, it is added to the final composite. And here I can set the strength of this grain by setting the factor of this mix node. Okay, let's now take a look at the nodes that create the car itself composite. So here we have the nodes responsible for the background, far background, near background, color correction and depth of field. And here we have the car composited over the background. And those nodes are responsible for this car composite. That's how it looks like. Those are the nodes responsible for the car without the transparent elements. The main chain of the nodes that creates this image goes like this. So let's start analyzing it from the top to the bottom. The first one is our direct lighting. For the car, I have created the separate render layer for direct lighting. I called this render layer main energy. I should call it direct lighting, but let's simply remember that main energy render layer is responsible for the direct lighting. And here I have used the material overwrite. I have created the pure white material. I called it energy. Here I have also used the light group and I did it just because later on I have added some lamps that I wanted to illuminate only certain parts of the car. And I wanted those lamps to be excluded from this render layer. So I created the group of lamps and I added only my main light sources. Only two lamps are the members of this group. Both of them are the sun lamps. This one is the main one. I used rather low energy of 0.5. And this one with even lower energy simply fills the areas that are in complete darkness. When I created this render layer, I made a mistake here. Because I have activated the specular pass, this is not the mistake, but I should have excluded this from the combined pass. Because the technique of creating the direct lighting pass assumes that I use the combined pass as the direct lighting, and it should include the clean diffuse pass and the shadow pass. But the specular should definitely be added afterwards. So this is my direct lighting pass after all of the adjustments that I applied to it. Those nodes created this pass. Here is the combined pass of the render layer that I called main energy. And because I made this mistake that I told you about, the specular pass is included into it. But because I have the access to the specular pass that looks like this, we can here very easily simply subtract it from the combined pass and the result of it looks like this. So let's take a look here. This is before and this is after. I have passed this result through the RGB curves node, but in this case it doesn't do anything. But I added this node such that later on, if I decide to do something about this image, I wouldn't have to add additional nodes. I would simply make adjustments to the node that already exists. Then here is the node that converts this image to black and white version of it, but in fact it doesn't make a huge difference. And in fact, when I'm looking at it right now, I see that those three nodes are completely useless. Let's get rid of them. I will select them and control X to delete them, leaving the connection. And here I have passed this result through the color balance node, such that now it behaves as if at least one of the lamps that I used have some color. I always used only white lamps. This way it's easier to play with the colors of those lamps here in compositing. And this is what I do here. Okay, so the direct lighting is ready, it's time to add the environment light. It's added here using the mix node with the add blending mode, and that's the second input of it. It's just my environment lighting pass. I also made some adjustments to it, but nothing very complicated. I only passed it through the RGB curves node and I decided to adjust the midtones of it. And here it is added to the direct lighting pass. 
But here, as you can see, I used some notes to create the factor of this mix note. Initially, those notes weren't there, but later on, I decided to composite the rims completely separately. So I wanted to have the control over how the environment lighting pass influenced the rims themselves. So here I have used the math node where I subtracted the alpha of the rims from one, which gave me this result. Then if I used this as the factor, the rims wouldn't be influenced by the environment lighting at all. But because this is pure white color, the environment lighting pass would be added with the intensity of 100%. And this was not my intention. I wanted to have the control over the power of environment lighting. So I have multiplied this result by some factor. I have used another math node. This time I used the multiply operation and I multiplied this by some value. And that's the result that I get. So now, when I use this image as the factor for adding the environment lighting pass, I am adding it with a power of 0.1 in those areas, and it's not added at all to the rims that are here completely black. And that's the result that I get. When the environment lighting is added to the direct lighting, it's time to multiply it by the color pass. That's my color pass, which initially didn't look like this. That's the original color pass but I made some adjustments to it and finally it looks like this. Here I am taking care about the color of the car paint. I wanted it to be a little bit different depending on the angle that I am looking at it. So I decided to use the normal pass. When I take the normal pass and pass it through the normal node and take a look at the dot of it, it looks like this. So I wanted the areas of the car paint that are facing the camera to have this color and the ones that are away from the camera to have this color. So I took the original color pass and here in this note I have mixed it with this color. But as the factor I have used the dot output of this normal note, which gave me this result. I of course want all of those operations to influence only the car paint, but this is taken care of later on in this note. Then I wanted to mix in this color. So I used the inverted version of the dot output of the normal note, which looks like this. And in this note, as the first input, I used this result. As the second input, I used this color. And as the factor, I used the inverted normals, which finally gave me this result. I have the elements that have the car paint material in separate render layer, so I have the access to the alpha of it. So now I can easily mix in this result into the original color pass using this as the factor. And it's done in this node. And as you can see, only the car paint changed. Those were not the only adjustments that I did to the color pass. I wanted to separately treat the rims. I wanted to change their color to something a little bit lighter. So I used the mix note to mix in this color, but as the factor, I wanted to use the alpha of the rims. And that's the result. The final adjustment that I wanted to make to the color pass was make the areas that are covered by the transparent parts a little bit darker. So I used the color balance node for this, where as the factor I used the alpha of the transparent elements. That's the result, and I wanted those areas to be a little bit less saturated, so I mixed the black and white version of this image with the colorful version of this image, where as the factor I used this, multiplied by some value, which gave me this result, and that's my final color pass. Here the color pass is multiplied by the sum of the direct and environment lighting. And here in this note I add the specular to it. That's the specular pass that I created. And those are the nodes that create the specular pass. And this is the combination of several elements. Like the specular pass of the main render layer. That's the specular pass of the render layer body the separate render layer where I rendered only the elements that have the car paint material. And for this material I have used a little bit different settings for specular. I have the separate render layer for the grill, and this is the specular pass for the rims. And here I am taking those elements and add them one on top of the other, 
using certain factors multiplied by the alpha channels of certain elements. For the car paint, I have changed the color of the specular and that's the final specular pass that I add on top of this one. And it's done in this note and now it came the time to add the reflections. In case of the specular, I decided to create the combined specular pass to be added using just one note. But this created a little bit of the mass, as you can see here. So in case of reflections, I decided to add them one by one. So here I am adding some of the reflections, here the next ones, next ones, and then the last ones. I say that those are the separate reflections pass, but in fact I use just one image as the second input of each of those nodes. This is the image and this is the combined pass of the main render layer. For all of the elements that are reflective, I have used the reflectivity of 100%. So this is in fact my image of reflections. I have explained it all in a separate video about the reflections pass. So here in this node I am adding this where as the factor I am using this, multiplied by some value which gave me this and that's the result of adding it on top of the image. In case of the rims I have used exactly the same image but I have passed it through the color balance node. I didn't change the colors of the lift, gamma and gain but I have lowered the exposure by moving this slider of the gain a little bit down and increased the gamma here and then when I used the alpha channel of the rims multiplied by some value and I used this as the factor for adding the reflection pass passed through this color balance and those are the reflections added to the rims on top of the previous result. Here I have the same story, another version of the same image passed through another settings of color balance node and as the factor I used the alpha channel of the grill which is multiplied by some value and here I am adding it on top of everything. Then when it comes to the reflections of the car paint, here I have the alpha channel and I wanted to achieve the Fresnel effect, so here I have the combination of the normal nodes, which is passed through the RGB curves node, then yet another RGB curves, and here I am multiplying this by the alpha channel and I am using this as the factor for adding the reflections pass, meaning the combined pass of the main render layer, I have passed it through another color balance, in this case I have changed the colors a little bit and here I am adding it on top of everything. So this is how this composite looks like without the alpha channel and it wouldn't want to composite very nicely over the background. So here I am converting the alpha mode from pre-multiplied to key, so that's the result that I get when I mix it with the background, then go the transparent elements plus overall color correction, finally some grain and that's the final result that I managed to achieve.